Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. I'm very much thankful also uh, that uh, my major advisor, Dr. Torino, is around. Um, actually, uh, the title of my study is not the original one. I just uh, get part, part of the original title because according to the short care management, I have to shorten that one. So that's why I have this early growth performance and carbon sequestration potential of selected trees. Uh, integrated grassland in southern lake in Philippines. That's the title of my presentation. Okay, for the structure of my presentation, I will be presenting a short introduction, then the methodological framework, the materials and methods, results and discussion, conclusion and recommendation. Okay, for introduction, we all know that forest is an indispensable resource. <coughs> Uh, we all know also that uh, humanity derived uh, their basic human needs from the forest ecosystem. And because of this uh, needs, the people that has to be satisfied with the increasing growing population, uh, there's always has been, even this time, uh, the forest destruction, which uh, according to uh, mongabai.com, it is about 157,400 hectares per year of forest that are removed from 2000 to 2005. And then, as a result of this destruction, there, there are transformation of uh, forest into other land uses. And one of which is the transformation of forest into a grassland ecosystem. In Region 8, uh, grassland ecosystem accounts about 12,400 hectares. Then aside from that, your grassland ecosystem, about 983,400 hectares of cultivated areas mixed with grassland and grassland. Considering that uh, grassland is very unproductive in terms of production in agriculture, or not even in agriculture, but also in forestry, we really need to rehabilitate this unproductive grassland uh, not only for agriculture but also for other uses uh, for example for plantation then we all know that plantation is considered as an effective machinery in storing carbon i think we all know that one there are many studies already that has been published that forest ecosystem uh, is uh, uh, very helpful uh, in storing carbon, not only in the soil, but also in their biomass. And then, we do not know yet uh, the capability of young plantation in storing carbon because it has not well been studied. Only few are studying the capabilities of young plantation, particularly when we are dealing with indigenous tree species, because as far as I am concerned, as far as my reading is concerned also, Majority of uh, the studies that has been dealing with carbon, I think, uh, uh, is related to exotic species. We know already exotic. Uh, these are species that came from other countries, but uh, not more on indigenous. That's why, uh, for my topic, I am dealing with indigenous tree species. Okay. Then, uh, we all know also that uh, in previous re rehabilitation project, uh, not only in Southern Lady but throughout the country, it is a failure one because uh, of so many reasons. Uh, some of the people are saying that because of financial resources, they weren't able to uh, sustain the project, but I don't know. Because uh, it will just develop the capabilities of the community to manage the newly established plantation, I think uh, it will be sustainable. But I don't know, in, in some part of Lake, I could say that uh, there are uh, reforestation projects or rehabilitation projects that are successful, and there are also which are not successful. So, for the significance of this study, uh, I am assuming that uh, the results uh, may provide relevant information on the importance of rehabilitating the green area using indigenous trees for biodiversity conservation 
climate change mitigation, and income generation. So income generation has to be uh, integrated also with uh, rehabilitating, rehabilitating degraded areas. Because uh, not only in agriculture we are concerned about uh, augmentation of the income of the farmers, but also in forestry. Uh, especially that uh, as of this time, as what uh, the first speaker is saying before, that uh, we are now uh, importing uh, forest and uh, agricultural no, uh, graduates or rice from other countries uh, rather than exporting that one to other countries, more or less similar to forestry. We are now uh, importing uh, forest products from other countries instead of being an exporter. Before, we back in the 1970s, we are an exporter of forest products, but this time it is the reverse. Okay, for my general objective, in that the study was conducted to scientifically contribute a body of knowledge that may become instrumental in the transformation of degraded grassland into a functionally productive ecosystem in southern Leyte. Okay, for my specific objectives, to compare the effects of different treatments on the survival and growth performances of inoculated and uninoculated settlings of selected trees in degraded grassland. The second one is to compare the effects of different treatments on the survival and growth performance of inoculated and uninoculated agoho using direct seeding as a method of rehabilitating degraded grassland. The third is to assess the carbon sequestration potential of the planted trees after the research implementation and to recommend suitable species for rehabilitation in Tibidat Tibidat Rianda dominated grassland in southern Leyte. Okay, for my materials and methods, I am presenting instead of the conceptual framework, I, I prepared to present the research methodological framework on how I was able to come up with the research. First, uh, we have here uh, the conceptualization of the research topic and outline formulation. After formulating the research topic, uh, I was uh, I, I am submitting this to my uh, advisor for comments and uh, for comments and suggestions. So I there in my previous research, plant research, there was uh, uh, some revision. That's why uh, we came up to this title. Then after this one, uh, we have here the participatory recognition survey and site selection. So it is not only me that who uh, selected the sites, but I am assisted by the laborers and the staff of the forest park where I am conducting my research. Then after that, uh, I selected the sampling methods and experimental design. Then I implemented the research and started with the data collection now I am processing my data and doing some analysis. Then the last part is continued monitoring and evaluation of research. Actually, my research just terminated last December, but uh, I'm planning to continue that one because I think one year is not enough to monitor the growth performance of these indigenous species to do with the amount of carbon that uh, has to be sequestered by, by these trees. So I am assigning a laborer to continue with the activities. Then I will be seeking also assistance from the uh, city government of Malasin uh, to provide me some labor in doing the activities. And if we have all these activities, it may contribute to the outcome, the implementation of the rehabilitation projects. Okay, actually this is the uh, topography as well as the vegetation of the site. It is, it is predominantly of Temida Triandra with only few um, indigenous trees. I think so we could find here a uh, species of Lisa from Neocle uh, Neo Neoclea species, no, family under the family, no, family of Rogasi. Okay, this is now the um, study site, the location of the study site. Okay, this is now the location of the research area. So actually it is uh, from Maasin city proper. It is about uh, 16 kilometers. 
16 kilometers from Mahasin proper. Then from the, from the area, you have to go downstairs to the lower elevation. Then you have to take almost one kilometer downstairs. I take note also that uh, the climate here in Leyte is really very different from ours. And take note also that we back in uh, previous years, we have that in South tragedy. And now uh, people are this time uh, very uh, purple of the happenings because this time it's also raining. That's why the collection by data has been affected last December because of the rain. Okay, then next is the research component. Actually, I have here vegetation assessment, soil assessment, nursery experiments, fell experiments, and carbon sequestration. But for nursery experiments, I did not include this one because uh, with the title alone, it's uh, dealing with early growth performance. Okay, for vegetation assessment, uh, first I establish a reference point. Then from the center, the reference point, I, I made a line following the cardinal direction. Uh, and then, after establishing the uh, uh, line, I do the establishment of the plots. Then, do we do some inventory of the species within the plot, or if possible, I am doing some harvesting of the vegetation within, within the plot, if necessary, to, the, to determine the amount or the number of species. Okay, now, as a result of the vegetation assessment, I found out that uh, within the area that I established my research, there are nine native tree species. Then for plantation tree species, there are five. Usually for plantation species, this comprise of mangium, auri, mahogany, then sometimes imani, and uh, uh, acacia auriculiformis. Then for grasses, there are about 47 grasses that uh, species that I found out, but the most dominant uh, species is Magogbog or the Temida Leandra, um, which more or less accounts 60% of the total vegetation within the area. Then it is followed by Aksam, um, Aksam, then Amorsiko, Pugut, and other species. Okay, for soil assessment, uh, I did also some identification of the sampling points per blood. Then after the blood the sampling points have been identified, I did some soil ex excavation and then of 30 cm the elevation of the pit into two depth level, 15 cm and 30 cm. Then the collection of sample per depth level in our sampling points in this blood followed. Then I mix the sample per depth level blood and then placement of the sample in a clean plastic bag, then leveling of the plastic bag, transportation of the sample to the nursery for we then to the uh, Department of Agronomy and Soil Science in the State University for open drying and soil rutinary analysis. And uh, this is the uh, the plot layout for vegetation and soil sample collection that they have. For the green one, it, it uh, represents the place where the sample was taken. Then for the other color, the yellow, yellow, yellow is, uh, this refers to uh, the plot where I collected my vegetation or grass species. Okay, these are the characteristics of the soil after the implementation. It has a moisture content of ranging from 52 to 58. Actually, I have two sites. One site uh, I'm dealing with outplanting of seedlings. So the other one is for, that, for direct seeding activities. Okay, for direct seeding, uh, the moisture content is 52.75. Then for outplanting, it's 58.92. Then for particle density, it's compacted. So the, 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 with the bulk density. And for the soil texture, uh, for the first type, it, it ranges from low to self low. Then for the other one, it is clay to self low. Then for the cation exchange capacity, it's very high. For OM, it's, it is uh, adequate. Then for pH, uh, for the first side, it is neutral. The second side, it is slightly acidic. For phosphorus and potassium, it is very low. Okay, now for the growth of the planted seedlings. Okay, I am presenting now the percent survival of 
thus species. Okay, take note that mulabi, okay, for all the species that I'm planting, mulabi show the highest percentage of survival. It is followed by ago, then binonga, and anobi. Uh, actually, for binonga and anobi, the percentage survival is very low. Considering that uh, we back in 2010, January 2010, it's, uh, it's uh, rainy months, and as I recall, uh, I think only three days, there are only three days, which is more or less uh, sunny, then the remaining 28 days uh, is always uh, rainy. So that's why, uh, for me, I really found out that planting binonga and anobi, I think, is not ideal during peak rainy season. So you have to select a certain part of the year where you are going to plant uh, anobing and binonga. Take note that binonga is a finer species. Even if you will born the area, uh, uh, area, you can find that after morning, a few weeks after morning, uh, there's a generation of uh, binonga. But how come that uh, when binonga is being planted and uh, being curved? Uh, the percent survival is very low. Maybe it might be because of the amount of rain that I being experienced by the site. Okay, for the analysis of variants for species percent survival, um, uh, it was uh, found out that uh, uh, the effect of blocks and species inoculation has something to do with the survival of the species. Um, uh, it has to be uh, further investigated uh, because uh, according to the analysis being given to me by uh, uh, the one who assisted me from the biotech that uh, there are only a uh, few infection of uh, the root system but how come that uh, it is uh, species inoculation has something to do with uh, the present survival of the three species so it has to be further investigated Okay, then for the height of the species, uh, it was found out that uh, Agoho uh, has the highest uh, uh, height, uh, ranging from 14.28 centimeter to 200.26 centimeter. So 14.28, uh, this is the starting uh, height of the species. Then after one year, uh, it became uh, 203. So you can say that. Uh, uh, go is a fast growing species. Uh, uh, maybe we don't know because uh, some of the treatments were also applied with fertilizer. It has something to do with the amount of fertilizer that has been applied to the uh, planted trees. Then take note also that uh, Anubing has the less height. Okay, found out that Anubing uh, is a glow, uh, slow growing tree species. Unlike with my previous observation, when an open area uh, has been born, I found out some species of anobi is more or less uh, uh, older, uh, even just uh, less than for, for a year. Uh, it produces a higher less more than one meter. But in this case, when an opening has been planted, it counted only for 84.73%. For Mulabi also, uh, I think it has something to do with the infestation that has been going on in the area. Okay, the the upper shoots of the bolabi uh, has been always attacked by ants, uh, then infested with a virus attack, then after that it, it became welted then dies back and produced um, numerous branches. Okay, for the analysis of variants for high growth it was found out that uh, black species inoculation and fertilization has something to do with the high growth of the plant species. So uh, it has for blood, effect of blood, it has 6.46. Then for species inoculation, we have 19.49. Then for fertilization, 26.67. But in terms of the interaction between species inoculation and fertilization, it is uh, not significant. Okay, for the diameter of the species, uh, it was found out that Binunga, uh, the diameter after one year, ranges from 1.925 to 27.42. So there's an increase of more or less 25 centimeters after one year. Uh, compared to Anobing, wherein Anobing in the highest diameter is only 14.67. 
Then for Ago, it's only 18.74, and for Mulabi, it's 25.02. Then for the analysis of variance and diameter growth, because found out again that lot, species inflation, and fertilization has something to do with uh, the diameter growth of the three species. Okay, actually this is now the picture of the adobo plantation that I have in my side. Okay, this is the one year old boho. And then on the other side we have here uh, calumpit. Actually I did not include calumpit. Uh, because we are very doubtful before that calumpit will not grow in the unit areas but it seems that calumpit in terms of growth uh, is even uh, better compared to other species. Okay, then we have here the anobin. This is now the uh, planted being with anobin. Then third we have the monabi. It produce uh, numerous batches and then and the other part we have here is uh, Binoga ok we have here Binoga on the right side ok for the growth and survival of directly seeded ago actually uh, I'm very much uh, doubtful if I will go on with ago considering the uh, seeds of ago is very fine but with uh, the motivation of my advisor, so I did some trial. Then for height, I found out that uh, the start, the first month of germination, uh, the difference in terms of the height growth between inoculated and uninoculated is more or less uh, um, uh, smaller because we have here 2.26 for uh, and inoculated ago, and then for inoculated we have 3.61 but after one year uh, the gap has been widened from 13.84 to 105.49 okay for the analysis of variance for high growth um, uh, analysis of variance tell us that uh, in terms of high growth, high growth, high growth uh, there's uh, no significant difference between uh, the sources of variation with respect to the height. Then for the diameter, the same is true with the diameter for first month, more or less the same, mm, just a matter of 0.05. Then for after 18 months, uh, the gap has been widened from 2.65 to 8.6 for inoculated ago. Then for the analysis of variance, the same with the height, uh, we found out that it is not uh, significant. Then for the percent survival of beneficiated ago, we found out that uh, for inoculated ago has better percentage survival compared to the uninoculated one. Okay, for the analysis of variance, uh, it was found out that only black has something to do with the percent survival of the ago. Then for the carbon sequestration potential of young plantation, I did some destructive sampling for me to come up with the above ground and raw biomass. Then I harvested one uh, seedling for every plant combination. Then after that, I did some packaging of the individual biomass. Then I weighed the sample to get the press rate in grams. Then I open right away. I will open dry the sample. Uh, then weigh the sample. Then I did some grinding at the Visaya State University. But when I submitted that one to uh, Airy, uh, the Airy people uh, told me that uh, it has some it has to undergo another grinding activities because uh, the machine that we have will not accept the kind of dry materials that I have, so I did another grinding operation. Then after that, I the carbon analysis has been done by Airy. Okay, this is the, this are the process, so my laborer has uh, conducted the approaching, careful approaching of the plant, uh, taking note of the uh, root samples that it could not be uh, destroyed, but in, in cases where the root sample has been uh, destroyed or cut, we have to recover the root samples from the soil to make it sure that we could get the actual rock biomass of every species. 
Then uh, these are now the segregation of the road samples from stems and leaves of the uh, species. Then this, uh, these are now the dried uh, samples. Then we have here the pack uh, uh, dried samples to be separated at airy. Then for soil organic carbon, I did also some analysis of the soil organic carbon because uh, it's very important. Take note that uh, soil is uh, another pool of uh, no pool or site for carbon uh, uh, deposits. So I did some analysis also. I collected some soil samples. We have two sets per block at one site for its depth level. Then I mix the sample to get a composite one, then a published one, and then the sample we have been trying to sample, and then the laboratory analysis follows. Okay, these are now the, uh, the samples that I collected for soil organic carbon analysis. Then for the way to plant biomass of one year old plantation and continuous trees, uh, we found out that. Uh, Pinoga has the highest price way, so do we the, uh, uh, so the open drive way. Uh, considering that the diameter of Pinoga is uh, higher, not only the diameter but also the root samples, I think is wide spreading, although it is shallow but it's wide spreading, and it produces uh, numerous uh, um, secondary and tertiary root system. Then it was followed by uh, Molabe, then Ago and Anobing. For Anobing, I found out that the number of secondary root system and tertiary is minimal. Uh, for Ago, I think uh, Ago is much better compared to Anobing in terms of the root system. Okay, for the present biomass or carbon density, I found out that uh, we know, uh, no, it's uh, uh, no being has the highest uh, uh, carbon content, which is 40.60, then followed by Molave, then Binoga, then for the road carbon, uh, the same here it's an Obing, it's an Obing has the highest, then followed by Molave, then uh, Binoga and Agoho. For the soil organic carbon, I think this is based from the soil that they have and um, okay, it, come out, it came out that uh, uh, Go was the highest one with, with uh, 85.86, then the lowest one is an opening. For the amount of carbon being sequestered by the different tree species, it came out that uh, um, Binonga has the highest uh, amount of carbon in terms of uh, megagrams of carbon per hectare, which is, um, which is equal to 0.51 uh, megagram, uh, megagram carbon per hectare. Then it was followed by Molabe, then uh, Go and Anobing. Uh, the amount of carbon being sequestered by this uh, young plantation is very comparable to that of Mahogany, because based from the scattered data that I, I was able to retrieve as a result of study being conducted by uh, I think my in Leyte, for Mahogany first year old, Mahogany, the amount of carbon being sequestered is 0 0.000, so I don't know. Uh, so if we will compare, to, if we compare that one with the data that we have, I think uh, this indigenous species is being uh, uh, it's more or less uh, ahead or better compared to mahogany at the start of the planting year. But I don't know after the second year until the, uh, the species is mature because we have to monitor. Okay, for my conclusion, <coughs> the planting species of Ago, Mulabe, Binonga, and Anubic are tolerant for grassland condition and can be used in rehabilitation in Temida dominated grassland. However, its establishment has to be carefully planned and attuned with respect to climatic conditions. Subcultural management practices has to be strictly implemented during the initial phase of establishment to promote the growth of the planted seedlings and increase the percentage of survival. So, as what I have said before, um, the growth of Bina is a pioneer species has been affected by the amount of rainfall uh, 
prevalent in the area. That's why the percentage survival is very low compared to other species. That's why we have two vector pool with uh, the, the, the establishment of the plantation respect to climate. And the second one, the four species are counted, the species of Angoho and Malabi show better overall performance in terms of the growth in diameter and height and percent survival as well. Binonga, although a pioneer species, is less responsive, particularly planted during peak weeding season. Then, rehabilitation plus site by direct seeding is viable. However, extra care has to be put in place, particularly if finely seeded trees by avoid use in planting. Germinated seeds are very susceptible to rainfall and soil erosion impacts, thereby reducing its percentage of survival. Because uh, for me, with my observation, uh, when I saw the, the ago seeds in respective pot, uh, pots, or uh, that is because we, I use this pot, it's not direct seeding over the entire area, there's a 100% uh, uh, germination. Then in just one week, I think, Still, it is 100. Then later on, as the days comes, uh, it is uh, being reduced until such time that uh, to, uh, totally all the germinated seedlings seeds uh, has been uh, wiped out. So only few just remain. Okay, the performance of the planted species in the process of larval species is comparable to slow-growing trees like nursery mahogany having the same age level. Then, for my recommendation, responsiveness of the species planted respect to subcultural methods and treatments that would improve the species survival and growth should be continuously monitored and evaluated in order to come up with more reliable alternative options. I think one year is not enough. That's why I decided to uh, continue with that. Maybe I have to work out with the local government uh, of Mass and City. Um, maybe they will. Uh, they are supportive as far as I, my observation is concerned. They are very support, supportive, and I think they will help me in the, in sustaining the project there in Masin. Okay, then Agu and Mulabi is recommended to be the best species for rehabilitation in Temida tree and Dragon Grassland. However, extra care has to be given in passes for Mulabi since it is permanently infested with insects or ants causing the dieback of the upper shoots. Then the use of fertilizer for species less responsive to mycorrhizal inoculation is also recommended at the area stages which development to address the impoverished or harsh condition of the site. However, the amount of fertilizer application should be evaluated and the use of organic fertilizer be tested. So in my case here, I'm using inorganic fertilizer, but uh, in maybe in some researchers in the future, because I'm planning to interplant uh, the two crops in the side, uh, uh, the side, so maybe I will be using organic fertilizer instead of uh, inorganic because now we are in the trend that we have to use organic fertilizer rather than inorganic fertilizer. Okay, then regular monitoring, maintenance and protection of the research site should be conducted. Okay, this is very important, especially that uh, the area is very rocky. Um, some of the rocks are falling upstairs and there's a possibility that uh, it will stroke to the planted uh, seedlings and it might, uh, might be cut or it might be uh, as a slumpy or whatever or it might be, uh, it might die. That's why we have to continuously monitor the uh, plantation. Then not only for that but also for the infestation of uh, the disease. So we have to monitor, particularly the uh, Mulabe. Then continued rehabilitation of the area using indigenous trees is recommended. Okay, the planting of cash crops to the newly established planting is highly recommended in order to generate additional benefits. Actually, I have some extra seedlings of uh, the four species in the site. Mm, I was wondering that uh, uh, yeah, the sitting was not there already. Then I asked my neighbor, uh, my neighbor told me that uh, it was planted by the nursery people or the people from the barangay. Some of the barangay residents uh, acquired or get some sample of the seedlings and then they grow that one. Then they planted that one into the respective farm lots. So more or less, uh, the awareness of the people there is uh, high test. 
we did an introduction of the indigenous three species. Okay, then evaluation of the effectiveness of the inhumans with respect to the species planted is further recommended to come up with a final conclusion about their responsiveness. The use of resident species in the area is highly recommended. Okay, take note that uh, before for my visitation uh, assessment, uh, I found out that there are uh, indigenous tree species in the area. So I think uh, we need to evaluate also the performance of these indigenous trees. Uh, maybe they, they are very suitable also for rehabilitation, like for example for Baha'i. Baha'i, I think, uh, is uh, it's a nitrogen fixing tree species. Uh, it is uh, prevalent in the area and grows well. So I think uh, there's a need to, to evaluate this species also. Then the use of best quality seedling is highly recommended for better soils in terms of its survival and growth performance. Seed banks located in strategic places consisting of viable seeds of indigenous trees should be developed and established for use in the rehabilitation of degraded areas. So, in my case, in our university, uh, we could not uh, found or uh, we don't have any uh, stock of uh, seeds pertaining to indigenous trees because when we have uh, the seeds, we directly sow the one in nursery because more needs because the people are, uh, are, are looking for indigenous trees. So in my case, one of the recommendations that we have to establish uh, seed banks uh, consisting of indigenous tree seeds. I don't know here in UPLB, but I think Dr. Tolentino in the other cell in UPLB. Forest uh, Forest trees. Uh, that's one of the problems we have compared to exotic one, because for exotic, I think we could uh, we, we can find for exotic anywhere in the Philippines if you want to plant exotic. But for indigenous, it's really very really hard to find indigenous species seeds. Okay, greater amount of carbon dioxide is stored in the soil and part is tied up in the plant biomass. Hence, the conservation of stored carbon in different pools has to be considered and incorporated in the development of forest management plan. Because in our forest management plan, we are just uh, scheduling uh, how, uh, how much volume we could harvest from the plantation or from the forest, what's the semiculture methods that we have to use, and so on. And then in this case, we have to incorporate also management strategies for us to uh, conserve the amount of carbon. Because we all know that we are not uh, on climate change, then we have so much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and we have to uh, get back this carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and store it well in the uh, soil or even in the plant biomass. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. Actually, uh, as what I have said, this is just for my dissertation and has to be presented to my advisor uh, for my defense uh, in the future, maybe by February. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Pondiar. Can you give Professor Pondiar a, a round of applause? At this point, like before, I would like to invite our audience to use the microphones around the room to direct your questions, your comments to Professor Pondiar in his presentation. Uh, please introduce yourself as well as your institution. Yes, of course, Dr. Mauricio. Uh, thank you, Brother Kulidar. Uh, we are both foresters, you know. So, uh, thank you for that uh, very nice uh, study. Uh, I would like to ask uh, the question and then make some recommendations or suggestions later. Uh, did you, when you planted uh, these grasslands, uh, did you mix the forest? You know, for, for, is it four? Three species? Uh, I mix it one. Or, uh, so by design, I adapted the randomized complete block design. It's a factorial. It's by block. Uh, the species is assigned by block or by block. Well, uh, thank you. I would like now to make some suggestions because uh, I was uh, a research forester of Nasibit number for 11 years and a farmer three farmers for also 12 years in Mindanao. Now, my suggestion is, 
uh, especially now those who will be going to the field and reforesting. The present practice of me planting only one species in the same area is not so effective. It is better, from our experience, that you mix the species. Uh, indeed, uh, this is a recommendation of the late uh, Chancellor Descora Umari. When you plant in the grasslands, you can make use of the banana as an irrigation system. Because the banana is almost 100% and the grassland is almost dry. But a combination of uh, seedlings, three seedlings, and banana uh, can make uh, the area uh, or the growth of the seedlings very fast. But I proved this in uh, Agusan Sur by planting, in addition to banana, I planted maguey. Apaka. So, well, there were two sources of irrigation, but the third, the third source was I compartmented the the shallow creeks, and then uh, at the end of the uh, what do you call this division of the compartment at the lower, I, 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 I put a hole so that the water, instead of going down, will go into the plantation. So, in other words, meron lang isda, meron pa pang irrigation system, may kaon ka. And then, uh, I planted, in my case now, I will now, I, 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 my experience is, I planted four species in the same area, but not at the same time, at different periods. Bagras for electric posts, Mangyu and Jimilena, uh, Yemani for furniture, and Alicia Pancataria for uh, manufacture, uh, paper manufacture, and also, in the case of uh, practice in silviculture, natural, to encourage natural growing in the three species. The question now is, took me three generations of, <laughs> to find out the correct mixture. And uh, I suggest that uh, those of you who will be going, like, uh, well, like uh, Dr. Polina, continue the project so that uh, all of you, like me, will become millionaires. After, uh, after uh, 12 years of planting, uh, another way, another one is, instead of using organic and organic fertilizer, I use the super growth, so, so, super growth uh, uh, fertilizer from Biotech, mm -hmm. and then I follow this with distribution of the uh, African light crawler. So, so I I I I I, I, I let nature help me in this uh, uh, business. So after the two years, out of six lots, only two lots remain of eight hectares. I sold them. Well, to, to give you an idea, a twelve-year-old bagras cost approximately eight thousand per tree. The Bangyu, after 20 years or 30 years, will now cost 10,000 10, pesos a tree. There will be a piece of well, uh, uh, the, the price then was very low. But then, there is a way, I found a way that cutting these trees will produce uh, uh, sprouts, so you don't have to plant again. So, I saw, I saw again, at about four years later, I saw again the, the sprouts. And I became a millionaire twice. So, here, here is an example. But, but do not tell the, uh, the people in the mountains, they will ransom you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mauricio, for a suggestion and more or less recommendation and question also. I think uh, the one that I did in Saudi Lady, it is just a starting point. So according to your, uh, according to you, uh, I think we have to integrate. In my case, I have integrated also because I mixed uh, four species with one extra one, which is Kalumpe. 
but I did not include the other one in my uh, dissertation. And hopefully, if uh, we will be having it, uh, our agreements with the city government will be finalized, I think we have to uh, integrate or we have to plant again another species of indigenous to make it a modern farm in terms of indigenous trees in southern Italy because we don't have a, we don't have that one. In southern Italy, I think we have that uh, reforestation project uh, experimented by our previous president. Uh, it is being planted by a number of species, but in my case, in mass, and we don't have it. That's why I want to start this one, and uh, not only for these four species, but. Uh, maybe some species in the future, that's why I have to uh, plant this one to make this sign and maybe integrate not only forest species but also agricultural crops if possible because considering the uh, soil in the area, I think uh, the organic matter is adequate more or less it's good for the production of cash crop also, not only for trees so it will be an integrative, not only, for, uh, not, not, uh, only one species but more than one species any more questions from our audience? By the way, uh, you may download uh, the PowerPoint presentation of both our presenters today from the CIRCA website later this week. Uh, we will also be uploading the video of their presentation, so you can also access that from the CIRCA website. Any more questions for Professor Polinar? Yes, sir? Research. We have to look into with that nitrogen maybe in the future. 